technical victories. Nice. Uh, I, I listened to that. you say that, and then all I hear is the Tim Rogers. Yes, that uh, the uh, insert credit nice button. Uh, what does he use? He uses Dom from uh, Gears of War. I think. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it from uh, Mark. I think it's Phoenix from Gears of War. This is it's nice. someone from Gears of War. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not nice. I was completely wrong about Hot Wheels being in Horizon. Uh, there you go. Uh, I hope Hello. you have a, I hope hmm. you have, I hope, I hope I you have, We were gamers. The podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. The errata oh. right up. Errata. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, Horizon, for is a Horizon 5. It's really hard to say Horizon and not think Horizon Zero Dawn. Every uh, every time you say it. Horizon truly Zero. every time. Forza <laughs> H5. Uh, Hot Wheels. I went to the Hot Wheels place because I was kind of like I figured out what I'm going to do in that game. Isn't it like literally the aisle of Hot Wheels cars? Or it's, am I wrong there? So it is in the middle of the map. It is a giant open flat space. And I go there and I'm like, there's nothing here. This is weird. I wonder what, if you have to enter it from a different place and then it'll put it on the map. No, you enter it and then it's like, please pay twenty nine ninety nine. Oop, nope. I was like, well. That ain't, that's, that ain't included or free. Yeah, <laughs> why'd you put it on my map then? Because I don't want that. Yuck. There's also like achievements for it. So it's really helpful for them to have convinced me of what I want to do in the game and just be done. Because it literally is a live game that will go on forever. I mean, forever. I tried to do some of the uh, online multiplayer. I could see just doing that if you were like super into this game and not doing anything else. So there you go. Horizon 5. I wanted to do an intro, though. I wanted okay. to welcome to We Were Gamers, the intro. Get everyone and the stuff together. Episode three, two, one. Let's go. Nice. Yep. Well that, done. That was my intro. It was a Cowboy Bebop reference. And now, JJ, you're on the clock. Uh, the clock. Oh, gosh. Oh, now I'm all flustered. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know it was a with clock. The, with the first pick in the 2022 uh, uh, speaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good segue, Michael. Uh, it really does remind me that I have been deeply slacking in my commissioner duties and harassing the other people in my league to pay me money and also select a date for when we want to have a draft. Uh, and I know there have been people who have been saying like, hey, I know you heard you run a league. Do you have any spots open? And like we didn't, but multiple people in this league left the company in the last year. So maybe we do, you know? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Good point. I'm getting a little bit excited for football season. I haven't been in a while, but you know, when you got a decent is it, quarterback, is it, is it because Lewis Hamilton has joined the ownership group? Not necessarily. Uh, more the Russell Wilson looks like a real quarterback, and the team knows it. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that? What's the what's the dumb trademark? Let Russ cook or something? Yeah. Is that a thing? It is a I, thing. <laughs> I think maybe is a Seattle branded thing, but it's definitely a thing. Something about him cooking. That's definitely a thing. Mm. Okay. Just, you know, make sure you don't buy any of his like concussion water or whatever other stuff he sells. Right. Mm. I, I just in general probably shouldn't buy things from um, sports stars. Right. Like. Other than, the, like, sporting equipment. I mean, even... And yeah, maybe not even that. <laughs> yeah, like, should you buy the Rocks Under Armour line? I don't know. Do you want to pay twice as much for the same Under Armour stuff? Or four times as much for Under Armour stuff? Right? Like, like I don't think he makes bad clothes. He probably designs them well. But I can't, I can't physically pay five times as much as the thing should cost. Yeah. And, and like, you or I not being the rock or you also dear listener probably not being the rock but if you are the rock Dwayne, hello please 
uh we'd love to have you on just let us know you know email podcast, podcast. That we were gamers there you go yeah we'd love to talk with you Dwayne. so anytime um but everyone else uh not being the rock are probably not going to have the same needs as the rock in you know clothing like that right yeah not in the same uh we're not in the same physical ballpark let's say yeah we don't get paid to go to the gym like he does It'd be cool, though. It would be pretty cool. Uh, speaking of stuff that's that's neat uh, and cool, I wanted to uh, start us off with some talk about JRPGs this week uh, because that's where my head has been recently for a number of different reasons. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is on sale right now. Hey, that's a JRPG. Remastered. Uh, not the one I was going to talk about, but hey, great. Uh, I was going to say that Michael, uh, in the spirit of some of the posts that have gone up before the release of a new Trails game, uh, Uh your favorite person who ports Trails games and mine uh, has made some posts on Steam about the new features coming to Trails from Zero. Oh, yeah? Are they uh, they importing some uh, quality of life? Oh, yeah. Did you like uh, having a monitor that was a weird size and or really big? And then being annoyed that the GeoFront release, the other menu and uh, text and other UI I'd elements would not scale with your screen. And so, like, they would get really small despite the fact that you're at, like, you know, 1080p on the screen. But these things that were meant for, like, a PSP size screen now are really yeah, small. I, I could have done without that. Well, guess what? They're fixing it. Hey. Uh,. They're also apparently doing some work on the character sprites uh, in such a way that they are attempting to use like AI upscaling on them so that they look good even when run at 4K, uh, which is pretty nice because you can imagine like redoing all the sprites in those sprite-based games would kind of be an impossible task. Oh, yeah. Uh, they also mentioned they're importing a lot of the uh, well-loved features from the GeoFront release. But due to, you know, uh, reasons, they can't, they have to just re-implement them. They can't just, you know, take them from one place and move them in. Uh, But as a bonus, they got to fix some issues that had been noted with those. So, like, they're bringing back the message log, which was not something that existed in the original release. Yeah, that's good, because there's a lot of dialogue in these games. Yeah, and because a lot of it is voiced also, you can, you know, like, replay uh, voice lines and things of that nature. That's helpful. Uh, or like, you know, you open the message log and be like, okay, wait, sorry, I buttoned past too many times. What did that guy just say? going to say, or you, you know, fat thumb the button too fast and can't read or hear the text before you move on to the next one. And yeah, now it's too late and the villain just explained their plan and now you have missed crucial context. <laughs> um, so that's all been uh, very well uh, received, it sounds like. And it also sounds like they continued this like AI upscaling uh, approach through a bunch of different places in the like the game world as well. So the the backgrounds were 3D ish, right? Yeah, they had they had like 3D geometry, but were kind of flat looking. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it sounds like they applied the upscaling there as well, so that the uh, so that they would take assets that were, you know, rendered in high quality in some places, but then lower quality in other releases, and combined them and then upscaled them in an intelligent way so that you could like, oh, the text was blurry on this sign before, but in this other release it was clear, but the other parts of the sign were blurry, and then they like fixed it. So like now you have one clear bl- sign that has no blur, and you can read the text on, you know, in 4K or whatever. That's uh, very it's a very cool article. Uh, Durante uh, is the the poster's name. I don't know his actual human name. I assume that's not it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, he made some posts over there on the uh, the Steam forums about the upcoming features for that release. Um, very cool, man. I'm so happy. And then they also posted a blog post somewhere uh, with interviews from the GeoFront team uh, with the uh, one of the lead members, I guess, of that team uh, with like the people at Nisa doing the actual translation and being like, you know, Hey, you know, how did this come about? Like, you know, what is the, you know, how do you think we have done with your work and that sort of stuff? Um, it sounds like they let them like review it, you know, to make sure that we didn't, they didn't like ruin their script or whatever. 
Yeah. And that's a nice gesture too, right? Right. I mean, sure that you, you, that you got it right from the people who, uh, who originally thought it up. Right. It, Cause again, you know, they, they essentially bought the translation from them, right? Because they weren't going to do it themselves. And, you know, the giving the, they didn't, they didn't have to give the original creators any say so, right? Once you buy things, you can just keep them and then do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but it's nice of them to like get the people to come back and say, yeah, like they did a good job here and they have like more resources and fixed things we weren't able to and stuff like that. So, uh, been looking forward to that. I believe that's coming relatively soon. Um, not exactly September? sure when. September? I think it's September of this year that the, the first one comes out and then the second one is next year. I would believe that. Uh, in other JRPG news, uh, <laughs> Andy, I'm glad you're here for this one, actually. Oh, no. Um, is, it, uh, is it a debate about whether The Witcher is a JRPG? Oh, God. No. That... <laughs> <laughs> I just I mean, mentioned, I think I... Oh, I just okay, mentioned it because CD Projekt Red's 20th anniversary is today, and everything's on sale. Yeah, I just noticed that, too. Hey, they have some pretty good games out there. Uh, people should buy those, I guess. And mm. also Cyberpunk. And also Cyberpunk. Yeah. Got them. Um... <laughs> Okay, um, I'm here. I'm here for whatever this uh, problem is that I'm going to ruin. I, mean, I don't know. You're ruining anything. I don't think that's what I intended at all here. Uh, I was going to say that I you, I mentioned I'd been on uh, a JRPG thing, and you know, I've been playing Dragon's Dogma, which is definitively J and like sort of R, mostly RPG. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned, uh, at least you mentioned it in the chat. I don't know if you mentioned it in the podcast that you had accidentally bought in a copy of xenoblade 3 i did i put it in a cart and pre-ordered it uh as part of a separate order and then forgot to cancel it but uh, i'm i don't you know whatever <laughs> it's here uh i also did this but for <laughs> a similar reason <laughs> I'd had it in my cart because I was, you know, ma watching as the uh, price changed and how it went. And uh, I was buying other things that I, on Amazon that I wanted to get and then uh, hit checkout. And it was like, oh, this number is way higher than it should have been. Uh -huh. What did I do? Whoops. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I bought several things. And so I didn't notice that it was like quantity one off of what it should have been because sure. like it was buying like eight things or whatever. And. Sure. Um, I got got, so I also have a copy of Xenoblade Three, which I have not opened yet. <laughs> Definitive JRPG, almost, almost to uh, its core. Yeah, so I, I will probably dig into that uh, at some point here in the next month or or so. Um, as a as a liker of those games in particular, yeah. Uh, but really, the, I think the JRPG that is unexpectedly taken i mean unexpected to me maybe maybe this was more expected to the rest of you uh taking the group by storm this week has been that octopath champions of the continent uh it's unexpected to me because we were not huge fans of that heroes mode in hearthstone and i other than the fact that this is much cleaner when you get down to the mechanics it's not much different i think there's a uh it's definitely more rpg than that mode i feel but maybe i'm yeah. wrong about that i don't know i didn't play a lot of that mode yeah you might not be wrong um one definitely seemed more like it was uh ready to let you play more often and this one and i don't know i don't know you guys talk about it uh I thought that was going to be the lead in earlier when we were talking about drafting and I wanted to know your, your off, re off the top how much everyone re-rolled because I ended up not re-rolling. And, and and then once we talked about re-rolling, I really wanted to talk about uh, before you guys get deep, really the process of starting one of these games versus starting a normal JRPG, because I think it's kind of fascinating for a lot of people. Um, anybody I think that's that a didn't listen to a previous podcast where Michael talked about champions of the continent, go back and start there first. Cause we probably will skip some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For the intro. Yeah. We're definitely not going to cover all the battle system stuff probably, uh, except where it intersects with any experiences we had maybe. 
But I think re-rolling is the perfect place to start because that is the start. It is a very weird feeling of this game uh, to basically be like, all right, so you're going to download this game. It's like whatever gigabytes of your phone and you you know download all that and then it installs and you're like, all right, and then you have to download more once you actually start it. And then you're like, OK, I'm going to play this game. And then you read like all the information online and it's like, actually, what you should do is get one of these two characters. And then when you do your first set of roles later, get one of these other two characters. Otherwise, delete the game and start over. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and for for you on Android, you could just delete your data as long as you don't link it online for an iPhone. Uh, uninstall. Yeah, I was going to ask you how your how your process or how that factored into well, your decision making process not only is the install somewhat large once you open the game the game does more installing it does yeah it, that does that on android as well yes however you don't have to re-download all that stuff on the android yeah the, the 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 there's a button somewhere in the interface on android that's like delete account mm -hmm. and you hit that and it basically just restarts you from zero yeah. So I was I actually fell in between the two of you because the button was wasn't working properly at launch. I don't know if there were just too many people all trying to to access it at once, but the delete data button wasn't actually it wouldn't actually delete your da your data. It would just error out. So there was another non-install step that you could go into the default settings on the phone for the app and clear the data from there. But it meant that you had to re-download all of the data again each time. So you were almost reinstalling it. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad I didn't have to do that. I would not have re-rolled as many times as I did if I... If well, I, I, I wouldn't that. have either if the, the button started working a couple of hours after that. So it, it wasn't long, but right off the bat, that was your only option on re if, you were, uh, if you were on Android. That's interesting to know. So then how many times did you end up re-rolling, Michael? R rough um, numbers, I guess, if it's high. Uh, probably six to eight times. Okay, so I think I did a little more than that. Um, but it, it was a lot of like, while I was doing something else, if I was playing Magic or if I was playing Hearthstone or, you know, watching a show or whatever, I would just be idly clicking through the opening and checking my first unit. And if it wasn't the one I wanted, I would just delete and start over. Yeah, part of the problem for me was that in the first couple of hours, I uh, I hadn't seen the piece of advice that got posted um, on the subreddit, which was that you could just force quit the game after it did your your guaranteed five star draw at the beginning if you didn't get what you wanted. So I was just following it all the way through it each time. Yeah, I learned that later, like halfway through my rerolling, I was like, oh, OK, like I could just do this and then it's not so bad. Right. Uh, um, yeah, that key piece of advice um, needs the process for sure. Yeah, I definitely I yeah, I would say I was probably in the like. Under 20, but above 15 range, I would guess. Yeah, based based on what uh on what I read from a lot of people's experience and, and continued experience, there are still plenty of people asking, is this a good starting role or should I re-roll? Um, but I, I was pretty lucky in getting exactly what I wanted as soon as I did. Yeah, I still haven't seen the, uh, what's the like highly desired, Lynette, is that the name? Lynette, of the, the dancer, yeah. I have a Lynette. No haven't seen one in any of my roles either as the starter or any of the subsequent ones um i, I got it from the uh the step up banner <laughs> oh nice <laughs> hey man take it where you can get it man take, take saying. the value yeah 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 uh so i my starter is viola the thiefy daggery one that was also apparently good uh and yep. then i ended up with two other five stars on my opening roll and after having done a lot of those opening roles where I would have, you know, uh, someone else, uh, either uh, Fiore or Viola, usually as the first two or as the first one, and then getting two other fives, one of which was Fiore and the other one, Millard, I think, who's not yeah, very good. Millard. But... Yeah, and he's a cleric, you know, it helps to have healers. So, yes, he's um, good healing and, and doesn't have much of an offensive kit. Yeah. He uh, 
he sits in the back row and gets swapped to the front and then does the heel button and then goes back in the back row. <laughs> unless unless I need someone to bonk someone with a staff and then he can he's capable of doing that. Or I guess he also has light spells, which I don't have many others of. Anyway, uh, I ended up keeping that role. I figured that was uh, good enough to go with. And then I had a smattering of three and a halfs and four uh, other stars, other characters. So felt like it was good enough and I just started playing. So, Andy, how have, how much have you actually played then beyond that opening stuff? So I want to talk about that because I ended up, I mean, obsessing almost over a lot of the advice and videos that were sent out. Um, Michael sent uh, a YouTuber called Shizu Cats, who is a prolific JR, J, uh, JP version of the game player. He played only only free, not paid right and um he's got like hours worth of videos already out there about all these things and what you're supposed to do and the the best balances who are the good five stars who are the good four stars what your role should be how to play the game what things you should be focusing on and it you get i got i shouldn't say you get but i got pretty sucked into the idea that I'm going to be wasting a lot of my time if I just start playing. And so I just kept watching more and more and more videos about what to do when I start playing. Um, and then, you know, I finally got to doing the roles and expected to have to do this a bunch. And I rolled once and I ended up with uh, Sophia, Lynette and Fiore, all five stars. That's an awfully good role. <laughs> it feels pretty darn good. Uh, like that is a that is a I'm good, let's go kind of role. Like a, isn't that what an S and two A's or of the tier yeah. list that's ex- accepted? Uh, so that's it might good. be two S's. That's off the uh, 150 gem and the original tickets, the three tickets they give you and the starter role for the beginning of the game. Um, so I'm sitting here with another 500 gems and now I'm doing the research in like Okay, well, who are the backup characters I have? Because I don't want to waste time leveling backup characters. I don't need to. I need to roll more for these gems, or should I save these gems for an upcoming banner? And it's like the economy of these games has me feeling like I don't want to get into the same place I've gotten into, especially with, like, remember Fire Emblem Heroes or even the Mm -hmm. mode in Hearthstone where it's like, well, I wasted two days because now I have a better version of that character. Or I wasted all these items that it will take me a month and a half to re-get so i think it's going to be important to set some important limitations for yourself here at the start andrew and i this is something i have set for myself and i don't michael may or may not have i don't know i I don't think we've talked about it but i think it's going to be important for you and and uh, certainly i think it's important for me to say that hey i'm not going to get all the stuff in this game Oh, it's, no. it's not possible. Yeah. And it's also not possible for me to like keep up with the Joneses on the Internet kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So like when the new character is released, like it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to get that character. And if I want to try and get that character, I'm going to have to plan to save for months and months and months in advance. Right. To be able is, to get them. Absolutely. Right. So I thought, oh, then I have to prepare i have to know in advance if i need to save all these gems or if i should be like eh, i really only have a bunch of three stars right i don't have a lot else in the backup i didn't get like a wide range of stuff i got a bunch of good fives and that was about it so i look at and it so- and i'm like hmm, maybe i need to roll some more so certainly you could say that like I believe the game is built such that you can get by with the characters they give you for free. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, like you will be able to complete all the story stuff. You know, you may have to grind extra, right? Um, but with the characters you have, Andrew, I suspect you will be completely fine. <laughs> yeah, for a while. For quite a while. Uh, so, you know, at that point, don't worry about it. And, oh, if you're worried that, like, you're wasting levels on these three-star characters or whatever... Well, like kind of, but also at some point you are just going to need a diversity of characters as at a certain level that just have like, oh, this guy has a fire attack. I have no other people that have fire attacks. This dude does. And 
therefore he's now on the team because I need someone who has fire and no one else in my kit has. Right. Yep. When you, so when you get to the point of unlocking hunts, Andy, and I don't think JJ, you're at that point yet either. Um, you will very quickly realize that there is benefit to having more characters than less because See, this, of the aha, way that I can explain this because I've watched this video. Aha. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, JJ. This is why I get so scared to start these games is because doing hunts now there's there's like, oh, okay, I'm doing the hunt and I know that I want to get uh what are they called? Sacred scrolls, right? Sacred mm -hmm. scrolls for these eight characters because I really need to get them to class up so that they can get their fourth or fifth star. Okay, but JJ, mm -hmm. that's not the, is the most important thing. What is the most important thing is that when you do the hunts, you need to make sure that you are bringing the characters that get you over 600? It's 300 and 500 to 300, start. 500. Those are the tier levels. Okay. 500 influence with a, with whoever the hunt influence thing is because then you basically double the rewards from the hunt and it's actually more effective in the long run and more chance at getting silver shards that you can turn into gold seals. Okay. That sounds like a problem for me two months from now, not <laughs> today. <laughs> and for you, it will be longer than two months, Andy. So I think you don't need to worry. I know, but uh, that's this type of stuff that like, I yeah, feel so like you could games... waste months doing the wrong thing. So, but then also there's no like time limit. I know, but I know. Yeah, well, that's a good point. So it, but other, other games don't feel like. Well, so th this is part of the, the same thing. So the part of the psychology of these games, which try to how they try to get you to spend money. Right. Yeah. So you have to know ahead of time, they're going to try and do this stuff. You know, uh, for instance, I was doing a quest uh, for the nameless town today. Uh, one of the areas in the game. And uh, it was like, collect three of this thing. Okay, I go kill the monster, and it says, you know, that's one. Where's, where else can I get these things? There's only the one monster. It's an elite. It doesn't respawn until tomorrow. Uh, yeah, 20 hours. Oh, I have to come back and do it tomorrow. Or you can give, you know, give her a little, little something, something of the, one of these currencies and buy the stuff, right? Mm. Um, not gems. It's some other, I don't know if it was yeah, memory, memory shards, or whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, it's something else, whatever. Uh, but it's like, oh, okay. So I'm just not doing this the rest of the day. I'm just going to go do something else. I have lots of other quests, none of which require me to be here. I was doing this because it seemed like it would be easy to go do three kills and then be done, but it wasn't. So now I left and then I, I just come back the next day. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's the mindset you have to take. It's like, oh, it's going to be like three days before you finish this thing. Okay. Yeah, you'll also uh, you'll start to recruit people to the town as the you progress in the the nameless town side quest, uh, whose path actions reset every day, and they also give you one each, at least one each of the the resources that those three elites drop every day. So you can double the speed at which you're you're collecting them. Yeah, and, and so you know, then it's like, okay, well now I have a place to go to every day to go pick up the various materials that I need to do to build this town. You know, it's like, Oh, here's my daily quest run. I go into the town and I do this and I kill this monster and I give this to the person. And there I am, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so th that's, uh, you know, kind of the, how the, how it will play out over time. But initially, like at least how it's felt for me, I have kind of just like putzed around and done whatever kind of quest that I felt was good. I, bought some weapons sometimes and mostly didn't because I didn't feel like my characters needed them. Uh, I was like destroying monsters as long as my levels were generally above theirs. Yep. Uh, and so I was just like going through the stories basically. Uh, and yeah, I'm still doing that. I think I'm in chapter two. I've completed one of the chapter twos and I'm in the middle of another one and then I haven't started the third one. And then I, I think are there chapter threes also? Yes, there are chapter threes also, and then there's a an epilogue to the chapter. Yeah, so I haven't, I haven't done that at all. I have no idea what that's about. So I think, you know, I, I think, Andy, for your, you know, to your point here, maybe it is suboptimal 
and that I'm doing things in a suboptimal way. But like, I don't, I don't think the game is going to punish me long term. I think that uh, you are also stumbling into uh, a personal failure of mine. I don't know if it's it's a personality pro- quirk. Might not be a failure. Might not be a problem. I don't know. Uh, of trying to figure out how to optimally or best do something, right? So, like, at all, in, in most things that I do, it's the amount of research ahead of time to try and just make sure, ah, uh, I'm not going to find out later that I bought the wrong thing because there's, like, a better version. It costs the same amount. Or, uh, hey, gee, you know, I ended up collecting these things when I really didn't, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those, I don't want to... F- feel like a time waste for something that I want to enjoy later and then not feel like I messed it up. Oh, I'll, I'll throw a bit of a, a, of a wrench into your planning, Andy, and oh say it is, it is definitely worth pointing out that all of the advice that comes, that's coming from these Japanese players who have been playing for the last two years is predicated on the pacing of the Japanese releases which is and not what's happening currently. We have yep. a lot more content right from the jump than they did. And the release schedule seems to be um, a little more accelerated than what they were seeing. So you kind of need to temper what they're saying um, in certain cases because it's not necessarily going to be applicable to us because there are, there has been more time in between beats Um, in the Japanese releases for you to do things like gain experience from watching the Daily Kate videos than there is in English. And so I've reached a point where um, I finally got to a town where I didn't have, my characters weren't leveled up high enough to be able to buy any of the weapons or the armor when I walked into the town. Hmm. I haven't yet gone to a town where I cared that the weapons or armor <laughs> were worth buying. It was like, oh, there's stuff here, yeah, but like, meh. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting, uh, something interesting to hear, huh? Hmm. Yeah, the the difficulty feels like it is it is ramping quickly, and I think it's just the the openness to progress through the story so quickly without having those day, you know, those down days in between to slowly level your characters up to be ready for the next release. So yeah. we might have a problem. <laughs> I mean, will we though? Because again, it's, I'm, I already I said, I, I, I don't get that trying to keep up. I won't be trying to keep up with the Joneses. And right. so I'm just going to play the story at my pace and, as I feel I need things, you know, go research what there is to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And except for the, the collaborations and there have only been three in Japan, um, nothing is limited. And I think even with the collaborations, they eventually added the, those characters to the main pool. And I think the other important thing to note with like those collaborations and stuff, uh, and maybe this is different, um, you know, for this company, but I've pl- other mobile games that I've seen get those collaborations in Japan and they just never show up in the English version of the game. Oh yeah. That happened in uh, record keeper. So certainly that could, could happen here. Although, I mean, I feel like these are all square Enix properties. So yeah, it feels like, that would be know. a bummer because they, I know they had a collab with uh, some of the original bravely default characters. Yep. And one with near as well. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Well, um, I mean, you guys should talk further. I mean, JJ, you're further into the game other than trying to get Kate's every single day. Uh, what, what are you liking so far? Because it seems like it's, it's getting traction, not just in circles of people that like to try weird stuff or, um, people like us that have done gotcha games before, but like, I mean, uh, I think a couple of game outlets have talked about it and said this game's too good to be a gotcha game. The doctor said it was better than the original. I mean, that, that feels, Hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, I guess that's a a strong headline. (laughs) I've, 
I, not having played the original, I guess I can't really comment, but it seems unlikely. Um, I think my you know, the thing I have liked about it is that it's just a relatively nice looking RPG that I can just play on my phone sometimes when I have some free time. And then I can just like leave whenever. Like I don't need to, you know, th there aren't save points really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you just like get out of a battle and be like, all right, I'm swiping the screen off. I'm closed. It's closed now. It's good. Um, I assume if you close it in the middle of a battle, it doesn't save. I guess I don't know if that's true or not. I've it never tried. backs you. I I just did it for the first time a couple of days ago. It backs you up to wherever the last point you were on the map was. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, like you know, it would just like undo it, um, which is fine. Uh, that's also an option. The, so far, none of the battles have taken so long that I felt that like, ah, uh, this fight is going to be a huge time investment, right? It's like, okay, this fight is going to take minutes as opposed to seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and even for like boss characters and stuff, I've felt that way. Uh, so far, the ones that I've encountered. Um, so like I said, not really challenging, but I have been trying to do the Kates every day because that's like been a really the only source of experience that's been meaningful uh, to my characters, at least uh, where they are now. But I have really only been rolling with one party. I haven't been trying to like level up different characters and stuff. Yeah, I've I've also mostly been rolling with one party um, to the to that end to rolling the Kates every day. I did see a piece of advice that you should dump any uh, any of the nuts that you get that give you experience points into a single character because the quality of Kates that you see from those daily videos is governed by the highest level of any single party member. And there are tiers at, there might be a lower one, but I know there are tiers at 51 and 71. Um, so the sooner you can get one character leveled up higher, the faster the rest of your characters will catch up. I have a question. The nuts are not the ones they tell you to save because there are ones that they tell you to save because they're more like rare candies. Oh, uh, those are the the berries. Those are berries. Not, oh, okay. Yes, they're and they're they're blue. They look like a little uh, small blueberry. Those ones you're supposed to save because when you get to like level 99, it takes forever to get to 100. It's like 6 million experience points. Or you could just do it for free with a berry. Exactly. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, I haven't actually used any of the nuts yet. So I have a, I think, a significant store of them at this point. But now that I know that, I'm going to dump a bunch of them into one character and see if I can get up one of those break, break points. Yeah. See, this is what this is what I'm talking about. You've watched videos forever because there's all this impossible stuff to know. It, but the game is built to be confusing like this. Like they intend for this sort of stuff to be like figuring this stuff out kind of is the game in some ways. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and, and, you know, so it doesn't bother me right when it's like, oh, I'm doing this wrong or like I, I've been hoarding these nuts for no reason it turns out i could have been like leveling way faster but like already i already have to watch all this dialogue and then fight a boss that is like a pushover so like what's the point of leveling <laughs> like I, yeah it's like there's no point of doing it the only, the only reason that i do those kate videos uh, ads whatever they are is that because they're gonna go away and then refresh the next day right um, otherwise I would probably not bother with those either because it's like, eh, I just store them up and watch them all when I actually have a use for it. Um, so, you know, maybe as I start going through the chapter twos and I start getting you the chapter threes, cause again, like all the monsters at this point are like levels 14, 15, 18, something like that. And my characters are in like the mid twenties mostly and some higher, like some, a couple higher than that. And it's like, not, it's like no big deal. It's just like, yeah, whatever. I'm just like, you know, I'm just hitting like attack all and boost all, you know, <laughs> uh, very frequently, especially on like the trash monsters and the, the elites require more, um, more thought. You can't just do that. They will actually kill you. Um, but I have not been like, you know, you see like people talk about like, oh, the optimal way to play is to clear all the elites in these areas and like make sure you have like do one of these every 24 hours. And it's like, yeah, that's that's too much work. Is, I'm not it doing is that. what you make of it. Right. Like, yeah. There's you can sort of pick your level of grind if you want to just 
just clear the daily quests, then that's fine. Yeah, and, and that really has been my focus. It's been like I try to complete all of the daily quests every day, and I don't always succeed. Eh. Yeah, and you you won't. It'll be it'll it'll get easier and easier as you go on to complete them all. Yeah, and I think the like the difference is like oh, the daily quests are like hey, this is like what do you get like five rubies or you know like five influence or something. It's like nearly nothing for completing yeah i think the, sh- the shards are really the best thing that you get from the daily quests it like, and even then it's going to take forever to afford anything meaningful yeah and there are eventually like ways where you can spend like thirty thousand memory shards or whatever and get a stone that will guarantee you a five star roll right like you know on the crazy end of that stuff yeah and, there are and, there's super exclusive things and Andrew, I think you you watched the videos, so you know at some point there are eventual ways to just like playing the game earn five star units, like new five star units. Uh, I'm talking about like battles that you undertake, which the final reward of which is a five star unit. Oh, you're talking, talking about the, the arena? Yeah, the arena. Yeah. Uh, so you know there yeah. are there are just like ways to get characters that don't involve the gotcha system at all right true and yeah there probably are a lot less of those i will guess and they're probably much more annoying um than you know paying a little money in there and greasing the wheels (laughs) um but they're also from from all reports really good characters so they're not they're not handicapping the people that are waiting for the free five stars compared to the the uh the drawn five stars from the the guide and it sounds like the battles for those things are like completely preset in a way that you can be like all right i know the cheese i yes, have this, they, I, got they this are. Guy, I got these colors i have these weapons and you know i've grinded up enough to where i'm a decent level i can just go in here and they're going to cast this and then this and then this and so i heal this way and then i do this thing and then you know you unleash the mega torrent of 4x everything and the person you know loses half their life or whatever yeah if you uh andy you mentioned sh- the streamer shizu cats if you go to his japanese channel instead of the english one he has oh, videos boy. of him taking on some of the like top tier arena bosses and the the video is titled like five turn clear oh jeez. <laughs> yeah it's, so you know uh, yeah it's impressive the high level stuff is out there for the people that want to do it, you know. Um, I am just here to be the content tourist <laughs> and walk in and be like, "This is very nice. What do we have here? Hello. Oh, the way up there. That seems like a lot of work. No th- thanks." <laughs> yeah, um, I think the the content tourism might be for me. I appreciate the uh, the steerage towards that, you know. And I th- and I think that it's nice that this game allows you to do that. Where I feel like, you know, a game like Fire Emblem Heroes and some of the other mobile games I've played in the past really weren't designed for you to take that sort of approach. Like you really needed to do stuff that you needed to be playing a lot and like winning and, you know, having high level teams and that sort of stuff in order to see the stuff. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like eventually, you know, you get to the ends of the stories that exist here. And then like at some point down the line, they released a patch and there's just like more story now. (laughs) Like, and so it's like you just you know and they don't need to do any of these arenas or daily quests and grind anything or whatever you just pick up from wherever you were in the story and continue in doing that and you know who knows how long the story will go on and how weird it will get because it's a mobile game and I don't know how you can make a story that just keeps going on forever but the numbers always go up I imagine so <laughs> so you know it's nice that they allow you to do that and that you know if I felt like the time I spent up front re-rolling to get characters that were decent has now allowed me to just have this nice leisurely, you know, week and a half here of like, I just like play this little game on the side. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's nice that you can you can get off the rails if you want to. Because because there is no there is no other than the the gotcha banners to pull characters. There's nothing that's that's timed 
it's all just there for you to play, right? It's not like you have to do this in the next two weeks and then that's gone and you're on to the next event. Yeah, and even the gotcha banners, it's like, well, but like, okay, so I'm going to miss like an exclusive character. It'd be like, I don't need them for anything other than like, it's really cool that you could have the characters from Bravely Default. Yeah, I don't even know if they're good. I mean, I'm sure one of them, they don't usually put characters like that into the game without making them decent or pretty good, at least. But, you know, I'm sure you can be fine without having them. Um, So, you know, that's the it's nice that they allow that way of playing. And I'm frankly surprised (laughs) because mobile games are not typically like this. So maybe they're Uh, trying something new. I I can only hope, you know, yeah, I like I said, I will. I'm going to keep going here. Um, we'll see how I guess we'll see how it shakes out I don't know I assume you're it, so are are you all in on this one now Michael or have you still been going back to your other old haunt uh, I've still been going back to it just trying to clear out some of the last couple of things that they're dropping before end of service um, but they're they're definitely starting to to wind things down Do you feel that your time and or money, if any, were well spent? Yes, for the for the amount of enjoyment that I got out of it. And out of the, Record Keeper is what you're talking about. Yes, Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Oh, sorry, we didn't actually say that. <laughs> um, yes, for the amount of time that I got out of it and for the amount of time that I put into it compared to, say, a traditional game, I think it was definitely worth uh, it was definitely worth the investment. Nice, nice. I have one more quick topic here. Uh, Actually, two more quick topics. Um, Was there anything else that uh, you wanted to talk about, Michael, that we haven't covered yet? No, just uh, I'm I'm excited to hear how the the opening story unfolds for you guys, having having already gone through it. Man, Andrew, have you played any of the story at all yet? No, I just know that I picked Fame. Okay. Okay. I think that was I think that was where I started too and I I think I told JJ this but not you. You what you pick to start doesn't matter because as soon as you finish the first chapter of that, you can either continue to chapter 2 or jump to chapter 1 of one of the other two. Right. Yeah, so I I've been doing 111 and then 222 two, two, two so far. Um but it seems like it based on the difficulty I think that you could probably not do that and it would be fine. Um, I will say so far the story has been uh, more than I expected. Okay. Yep. Oh, yep. Just uh, just wait till you get to the end of some of the chapter twos. Uh, based on where they're going, I'm... Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it. When Andy gets there, we will talk about them, I am sure. Uh-huh. I'll do my best to catch up. Uh, you know, when you get there, that's, at your pace. Yeah, at your pace. That's the whole thing. Uh, so um, I am glad uh, that you guys are here. There were some really interesting things that happened in this past couple of weeks uh, that I became made aware of. And I guess that people on the Internet found out at large. Hey, uh, I'm sure at least one of you have played Super Punch Out uh, in the past, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boxing game, you know, Little Mac, the whole uh, deal. Yep, I, I I know it well thanks to the Smash. I can see my Little Mac amiibo above my head here. Hey, did you guys know that that game on the SNES has a two-player mode? No. Huh. Apparently neither did anyone else on the internet until, like, today. <laughs> There is a secret two player mode in Super Punch Out that was discovered by people like in the actual game. You can do this with a cartridge on a Super NES. And if you press a certain sequence of buttons on the second controller at the start screen and then select a fighter and then press the sequence of buttons again in reverse on the first controller, then the second player can select a fighter and then you fight each other. Whoa, what? Yeah. Okay. Like, that's crazy. The game is like how old? It's like 30 years old. It's been in there the entire time and no one has known. 
I wonder if it was just the kind of thing that given the given the game that it is, no one ever thought that there would be a, a two player mode. So well, why would anybody why would anybody hunt for it? Yeah, well, but and you have to have those over, controllers. People pour over dumped code all the time. How did it not get found? So uh, knowing a little bit about how dumped code looks, um, okay. I don't know in particular about the SNES, but I know how some of it looks. Uh, if it's not modern, it can be really, really hard to figure out what the heck any of it's doing. Okay. <laughs> um, and it could just be that like no one ever dug that deep into the various pieces of code. They, you know, they found the place that modifies your health bar so you could cheat. You know, or they found the place that lets you skip the levels, but they never thought to be like, oh, what's this section of code up here doing that it doesn't interact with when you're doing this other stuff? Oh well, who knows? Whatever. And no one ever thought if you press B, Y, and the R button and then pick your fighter and then do Y, L, and the other button on the second controller, then now you could have a two-player game. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. I love it, it, though. Yeah. It's, like, totally the kind of thing where you can see, like, the developers putting this in as, like, oh, we need to be able to test something. I want to see if it's possible to do this with this, but I don't want to program the AI. Can you just, like, dodge left 100 times for me or something? <laughs> and, you know, like, that kind of stuff and, like, not ever expected to show up and then never realizing that, like, oh, this ended up in the actual game that's been around for 30 years or whatever now. Yeah, it wasn't worth it to to cut that stub of code out. Uh, and no one finds it because, like, you're playing on your emulator or you're playing on your, you know, SNES Classic or whatever. It, are you pressing buttons on both controllers while you're trying to find secrets you know yeah, why would you be why would you even plug in the second controller exactly uh and that's just man it, that was a uh nice moment of joy i saw today on the internet of people like collectively losing their minds over the idea that like this had been hidden there for 30 years oh. best of easter eggs yes uh and another uh Final little tidbit here that I'm glad you're around for, uh, Andy. Mm. Uh, I don't know that Michael would have had a lot to say about this, but uh -oh. uh, you know, there's um, a Andrew. I know you and I both have uh, really loved that BattleTech game from Hairbrain Studios. Oh God, I'm. S you know what? I was <laughs> while we've been in this uh, pod, I have stared at it and thought they added a lot to this game afterwards, and I wonder if I should play it again. Oh man, if you haven't played those DLCs, the DLCs are pretty fun. Um, they have some like really, really broken mechs in there that are sweet. Um, yeah, uh, I but, mean they added the Inner Sphere. I think after I, the last time I played it, just as a reminder, I played it for a hundred and forty hours. Well, I, on that on that note, Andy, did you ever find that last mech, the one that drove you to play for so much longer? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh all let's see let's search the word oh, go go do your news my, uh, while my I guess for the word uh, my all. guess though is that if he didn't play before after the dlcs were out that achievement won't work because there's more mechs in the dlcs that he would need to get right yeah um, probably huh? not too not too many more though um but man just some really broken weapons because there's like a few kind of touching on the idea of the technology from the clan kind of ideas um but so i was made aware of this um through another podcast that i listened to okay and uh there is a f so uh, there are there have been full overhaul mods for this game for like a long time right yeah mm -hmm. um i don't know if you're aware of like a relatively popular one called rogue tech uh that one has like you know basically like they're like look we we took a look at this stuff and we think the roguelike system in here is like not good enough. And so they made a bunch of changes to it. They like rebalanced weapons, they rebalanced mechs, they changed the way systems work, tons of tons of changes, right? You know, the, the cost and the payoffs for things are very different. Well, some people took that and went like miles farther, uh, in my opinion, and created Battletech Advanced 3062. What? They took the game and, you know, Battletech, uh, you know, takes place in a fictional future uh, of specific years. But there's like specific eras of technology in Battletech where they've like, you know, 
they introduce certain new mechs and new capabilities later that then change the way warfare happens, right? Because of how all the you know, the new technology. Right. Well, this moves the game forward to 3062, which is like 30 or 40 years in the future. After the invasion? After the invasion. Mm-hmm. They, and this is like a complete overhaul. Like in... It changes the way evasion works so that light mechs are way, way more powerful because yes. evasion no longer goes away when you're shot at. Oh, man. The only way to remove evasion is to use sensor lock, which now makes sensors like super more pow- more important. Yeah, sensor lock was dumb. They changed the types and number of lances and things that you can field. So that not only are you fielding a lance of mech warriors, uh, which is a uh, lance is uh, four, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but now you also are fielding vehicles, battle armors, and like tanks and things like that. What? Uh, squads of infantries. No. That you then can take up against these other, you know, these bigger units. And it, if you have played BattleTech, you know. You're like, why would you want to take this tiny little tank? Uh, well, the reason you would want to take this tiny little tank is it has like four PPCs on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's got so like all some the of the guns. Str- and it has like tons of armor, but like if the mech walks up steps next to it, it just it. steps on it yeah. and you just die instantly. Yeah. So it's a very positioning dependent unit. They have artillery now. Uh, the little battle armors, which are like little, you know, human exosuit, basically, uh, mm-hmm. guys are, you know, like little swarms of, of dudes that can run up and jump on tanks and jump on mechs and like, you know, pin them down and deal damage to them as like a swarm. Right. And, you know, it, because of all these changes to the rest of the systems, right? Like I mentioned evasion not going away when you're, you're shot at. Like it allows you to do things like take out heavy mechs with light mechs because you can literally running lo- circles around them, running circles around them. Yeah. Whereas before, yeah, you could do that in Battletech, but it wasn't as effective because they would just wear you down with like, you know, a few shots here or there. And then the guy with the AC 20 would just unload on your light mech and you would die. Well, now they can't do that unless they are going to spend sensors on you. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, are you going to spend sensors on this little, like, you know, the, the commando running around over here or the hatchet man? There is a guy over there that has like two AC tens. You you probably want to use it on him. <laughs> yeah. Don't you want to um, lock the crab and take that down first? Probably, right? <laughs> I think you would. Um and but they've also overhauled the map in a way that you know the the lines of battle move around. You can see the territories controlled by the various factions. And your, you know, when you fight in certain sectors, you can change the way those those areas play out, like who controls which pieces of of territory and stuff. They've made an entirely new game here. It's it sounds like an entirely new game. Uh, and, and I don't know how easy it is to, like, access all this content. You are still like a mercenary commander, so it's not like you're just going to be able to, like, go out there and buy a bunch of clan mechs, <laughs> I don't think. Um. But, you know, you, you still have that capability. And because of the, like the systems changes and the armors changes and all these sorts of things, like you have, it sounds like the game is harder uh, for some of this stuff. Because again, like you bring, you know, your four land, your four mechs and your squad of vehicles and uh, you get out of position slightly. And now you've lost all your vehicles and that's 700,000 C bills down the drain or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, so it is more difficult in that way. Um, but it sounds like it's like, a very cool overhaul for this game. I'm kind of curious to check it out. I, I was trying to see it. if they allowed mods in Steam. But I don't think the game allows mods in Steam. I mean, it it's not on. I mean, so you wouldn't be able to play online. No, right? I know that. But like uh, you'd have to install it and then. I don't know how you would you mod di- it. I mean, I think you can just I, I th- so I, I could be wrong, but I believe you can just install the mod files and then just play. It should be fine. Yeah. OK. Uh, there. Uh, I think the the wiki name, uh, if you search Battletech Advanced 3062 uh, on Google, it should take you there uh, to, to their wiki. website. Yeah. That tells you, you know, how to install it and how to get access and what the changes are uh, if you want to go through them. 
Um, but it seems quite extensive, you know, rebalancing of heat and the way uh, like fires and things of that nature work so that uh, weapons like flamers and stuff are more uh, valuable. Yeah, they were pretty good before when you could just overheat a mech and make them shut down. So that's cool. Well, you know, but it allows you to do stuff like, again, with the ability of light mechs to just be really annoying, uh, you know, load your little dude up with two flamers and he's got the cooling. Who cares? He didn't have any armor anyway. Uh, I'm just going to run around in circles on your big mech and spray my fire at you. (laughs) And uh, you're going to have a bad time trying to shoot that PPC now, you know, man. Michael, we should still we should still make you play that game now that we're well, now that we finished uh, Portal Two. We should make you play this game. It's it's still sitting here in my library. I just haven't have to hit install. Maybe you should play the original first, though. I probably wouldn't want to start on this one. <laughs> is my guess. Okay. Um, the the original game and the DLCs are. Uh, well enough integrated that if you just do the campaign, you'll have a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll play the overhauled battle harebrained version and then maybe I'll do this too. This sounds nuts. Yeah. I'm very curious. I, I may end up trying to check it out this week if I have some spare time. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> Who we'll see. that? We'll see. You never know. Yeah. That's cool, man. Thanks for bringing that to much. I never heard of that. Yeah. That was my, uh, this was my if Andy is around con- uh, contribution to this Woo. podcast. All right. Because I knew not that Michael, not that you weren't uh, wouldn't have politely listened and nodded your head along <laughs> with me talking about this stuff. But, but Andy's, Andy. Andy's been there. He was in the trenches with you. 140 yes. hours worth of been there. I still can't find yeah, that man. achievement. They may have removed it when they added the new mechs to the game because they added like 20 new mechs to the game. It is possible. Or it's a hidden achievement and I can't search it. And that means I don't have it. (laughs) Oh, God. Well, I think that has brought us around here. Uh, Did we want to attempt to reconvene the food court here at the end? Or do we feel that uh, the court is still uh, not in session? Uh, Slave, let's let's muddle. Let's let's. Yeah. Muddle that one we, with a muddling still on, spoon. Still on a recess here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so folks that have uh, their opinions for the best uh, man-made foods can still get those into us. Uh, where can they do that, Michael? They can send an email to podcast at Um we're, I feel like we're, we're probably about due here pretty soon for a mailbag episode. Yeah, probably. Um, but you can also get at us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are, we were gamers at all those places. Um, listen to us on your podcasting app of choice or even better. Go watch us on YouTube. We were gamers all one word. Definitely. YouTubes are fun. Sometimes they have video. If I can record stuff, I don't know how to record my phone. I guess I could record my phone. Actually, it has a record screen function. Maybe I'll I would that. not. I would invest like fifteen minutes of time into this, and if it takes longer than that, then be like, eh. Well, I'm gonna play the You'll game be... anyway, so. That's true. You know, ca- capture like one fight and then call it a. That's good, the thing. Call it good. So like, I don't. I'm not out here to like make videos about the videos yet. You know, so I'm not like capturing hundreds of hours of footage of these things. Just like, oh, I'm gonna play that. I might as well just record it so I could maybe use it for the podcast. Capture that clip and loop it five times, you know? Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or 50 times. I don't know how long we talked about that. It may be 50. <laughs> 50 times, yeah. Uh, but folks, uh, Andy's putting a ton of work into some of those videos. You should definitely go check them out uh, if you have not out there. So, All right. Uh, well, thanks, everyone, for coming in with us here. And we will see you next time. Three, two, one, let's go.